a lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Jeremy Lee in the building and every guest that you ever needed. Sports cards after hours keep the hobby heated. Updates, hobby talk like you never seen it. Sports cards live and nothing could ever beat it. Sports cards is a lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Welcome to another episode of Sports Cards Live with your host, Jeremy Lee. All right, everybody, welcome back for another episode of REA Live. Robert Edward Auctions celebrating their 2024 spring catalog auction. And this is a live stream preview. We're going to go through several items today. By the way, it is Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. And uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy Lee. So let's get to it. Let's bring out president of REA Auctions, Mr. Brian Dwyer. Brian, we've done this before. Welcome back. I'm excited for another one of these. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Jeremy. Always good to be here. Always good. Always good. Well, this is a, there's some awesome items in this auction. I went through it and uh, like, like always you know, dropping stuff and a lot of items that uh, I'd love to be able to be bidding on. How are you feeling about this auction? Maybe compared to past ones, uh, the kick, it's the big kick up. You guys do your encore auctions pretty much monthly. But this is one of the three catalog auctions. How are you feeling with this one to kick off 2024? Yeah, we're we're really excited about it. We're actually so excited that we opened it up a day early. So the bidding uh, was originally supposed to go live tomorrow. We couldn't wait. The bidders couldn't wait. And we have a lot of really cool stuff, almost 3,800 items to show off in this auction. So first catalog auction of the year. It's going to be a really good one. Nice. Good stuff. Well, we on the on the thumbnail and the the you know, promoting this this episode, trying to let people know we've got these Michael Jordan rookie year game worn sneakers. So I think we're going to kick off the show with those. So let's bring up the shared screen. And to everybody who is watching either with us right now, if you're going to be watching this during the weeks leading up to the end of the auction, you know, you can visit register and bid, view register and bid. You see at the bottom of the screen right there, robertedwardauctions.com. Check it out. Log into there and have a have a peek at what's going on. A uh, little preview right there, but here we go. This is the auction itself. As Brian just mentioned, about 3,800 items. You can always scroll through the categories right here and go directly to the items that you are most interested in or just go by the default sorted by lot number and oftentimes they have some of the featured items at the top of the screen. But Brian, let's get it. You want to get into these Jordan sneakers right away? Oh, yeah. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot. Okay. We got 30 items lined up, starting with these right here. Lot number four, 1984, his rookie year, Jordan Chicago Bulls signed game-worn Nike Airship rookie sneakers authenticated by Mears and direct ball boy provenance. Brian, I've got a lot of questions about that. Why don't you... Give us your thoughts on on this piece. Yeah, these these are awesome. I mean, uh, Michael Jordan obviously needs no introduction, and these are the shoes that were on his feet in 1984, rookie year. They're airships, which obviously is not the Jordan or Jordan 1 that people might be familiar with. These were the first shoes that he wore as a rookie from Nike very short window before he rolled out his uh, you know, his own flagship sneaker. And these like we say in the title, came from a ball boy. They were given to a ball boy for the Pistons. Um, this is one of about 20 or 22 different pairs of sneakers from players from the 80s that we have in this auction. And they've been in his collection ever since. Uh, he got them signed by Jordan. He got them authenticated. And and they're just phenomenal. I mean, you hold these and you think it's like holding a Babe Ruth bat. It's like holding, you know, this this incredible piece of history um and you're looking at the tags there they're actually different sizes which is this quirky but very trademark jordan thing one's a 13 one's a 13 and a half and he wore different size shoes so they've got all the hallmarks that you look for they show game use they've got this great chain of custody we've got a letter of provenance from the consigner um they're just really really awesome that's a paycheck from when he was a ball boy I mean, they're dialed in. <laughs> this is what what an awesome collection of of uh, just documents to pair with the item itself. And you know, sneakers they weren't meant to last forever. These seem to be holding up really nicely. They look great. Is there anything them to, to preserve? Are they going to be 
be how do you expect do these sit out loose on your put them in an acrylic holder what is going to happen to these once they sell and somebody uh new owns them I think somebody's going to put them on display. Uh, we've certainly seen them in acrylic holders. We've certainly seen them in showcases. These are museum worthy. I mean, you, again, you go back, most people think of uh, uh, REA and, and the hobby as being a baseball a hobby, but uh, Babe Ruth bat, you know, Mickey Mantle jersey, Wayne Gretzky hockey stick, Michael Jordan shoes. So these these are just awesome pieces of history. Super cool. Well, so right now we're at one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Do you have any guesstimate as to where this might end up? I think they've actually gotten another bid while we've been talking here. Believe it or not. Oh. Look at that! I just refreshed. Yeah. We're up to one fifteen now. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So these these are uh, these are going to go for big bucks. I mean, we're we're thinking uh, probably half a million or more. There was another pair that sold a couple of years ago for over a million dollars. Um, but like I said, you know, these are one of 21, 22 total. There's 21 other pairs. We've got Dominique Wilkins, Robert Parrish, um, really incredible stuff. Did they all come from the same ball boy? The same? Yeah, he, he, was a, he was a ball boy for several years, I think 83 to 86 maybe, and uh, kept them all together, got them when he was working the visitor's locker rooms, and uh, and now he's putting them all out for sale. Lots of information here on the REA website. If you're looking to learn more, lots of, lots of text here to read and find out even more information than what uh, Brian has shared with us here today. These are awesome, Brian. Uh, anything else on these before we move on? No, I mean, I encourage people to just go and, and read the story. I mean, it's a great story from the earliest days of Jordan's career. A lot of paperwork, a lot of documentation. And I think this will be a fun one to watch over the next two and a half weeks already. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, Airship, that was just the brand, I guess, before the the uh, the 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 Air Ones came out or whatever the the main the black and red one. So really, really cool stuff. I want to say hello to eighty six is here. Yeah, this is a little bit early for a Saturday. Daniel, welcome, Gary. Good to see you. Gary says I met Brian many years ago at a Shriners card show in M A. He was working for a grading company, taking submissions. Congrats to your success. Uh, very nice of you, Gary, for Brian. Hi, and, Gary. Uh, Mike, Mike Petty says, will they cut these up and make shoe patch cards, do you think? <laughs> what do you think of that idea there, Brian? I, I, don't, I don't think so, and I certainly hope not, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I guess you never know. I don't think so either, but what do we know? It depends who buys them. They can do whatever they want with them. All right, guys, that was fun. Next up, one of, the, one of my favorite baseball cards in all of baseball cards, the 1954 Topps. Hank Aaron, rookie card. This is in a PSA 9 holder. Brian, as you know, these centering is always so awkward with this card because it's missing the top border. But if the two right, if the right and the, the left edge borders and the bottom are even, you can get a good gauge on it. This seems to be wonderfully centered uh, to my eye. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this particular copy? Yeah, so two things struck me about this card when I when we got it in. Uh, first was the centering, like you said, and second was the color. Um, both very tough to get, especially together on this card. Um, but this one has it all. So this was a late edition. Uh, it's lot number zero, and these ones have been selling for five to six hundred thousand dollars recently. So uh, it's gotten a couple more bids since what you see on the screen, but it's it's going to keep on going. That's funny, you know. I I, I prepared. I had this ready to go a couple hours ago and there's already bids coming in which makes sense to me so we're up to $235,000 on this which is you know halfway to that half a million that you just mentioned beautiful beautiful card you know when I say it's one of my favorites I I have my personal copy right here but I like to pull out the cards Brian that uh that I own when I'm doing the show with you here's my beautifully centered six so it's if nice. anyone picks up the nine from the auction and you happen to uh you know want to send me a message and say, hey, we're card brothers. We both have a, a, a Hank Aaron. That'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. All right, here we are. Let's go on to the next item then, Brian. We have, now this is a really, really special item because this is the 1933 Gowdy Lou Gehrig baseball card. This is the number 92. So it's the first one in the set. He has two identical cards. This is the earlier one to me. That kind of makes it a bit, a bit more of a rookie card but I consider the other one to be as well. But this is 
autographed, and as we say in the description here, or the auction title, highest graded. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, just absolutely stunning. That card, as you see, has a beautiful signature right across the center, graded a nine by PSA signature quality. We've never seen a 10. We've never heard of a 10. Uh, this is as good as you could possibly ever imagine getting. And the card itself is not too shabby either. A lot of times you'll see cards in low grade or, or you know, beat up condition. This is a very good looking example. Dynamite signature. Incredible combination. Now, you have another one of these cards in the auction. I think we're going to look at it next, but something I just want to call out because this is where I think I might be in a bit of a minority in the hobby. But for me, Brian, when I'm buying a vintage card like this, like I love this exact copy. I don't know what the, the card isn't graded. The, the, the Mint 9 applies only to the auto. It says auto grade only right there on the certificate. Also by the blue PSA DNA label, we can recognize what that means. But if you look at these corners, look at that corner there. It's got it's got some rounding. This corner here, rounding. They all have rounding. But you know what I love about this, Brian? The uniformity of the rounding. This is natural, organic wear on the card. Yet, yet the colors of the card are still popping. The centering is amazing. Top to bottom centering is wonderful. Left to right, it's a little bit to the right. But still, these cards are very hard to find in any can in any grade with perfect centering this is an i think it's an amazing copy for the card itself i love that it that it just it looks like a vintage card and you can tell it's got the, with, with a nice old autograph on there i really love this copy how about you yeah yeah i don't know there's a lot of character to it i mean the corners the color the wear but it it's beautiful and the combination i think we're going to look at a signed mantle later both of those cards, the Garrig and the Mantle, they're technically lower grade examples, but the combination, I wouldn't trade them for anything. Me neither. I absolutely love this copy right here. All right, guys. Well, this one with the Garrig Auto is currently, let's refresh and see if we're still at 85. We're at 87.5. So the bids are coming in on this. And what a, what a just an amazing, an amazing specimen of sports card history. All right. Next up is, okay, we're going right into the 51 Bowman Mickey Mantle rookie autographed. Newly discovered, the card grades a two, the autograph grades a nine. Let's just take a look at this. Oh my God, this. <laughs> it looks like a six. <laughs> Whoa. We got to look at the back. What's Brian? Why is this a two? There must be something I'm not seeing. What's going there, on? There is a hairline crease, I believe, in the top center border of the card uh, right there. Yep. And uh, it's just incredible. I mean, this came to us as part of a huge autograph collection. Uh, the majority of it will be in our in our summer auction, actually. But we wanted to get this one out to, to auction up for sale. Um, the guy collected through the mail, built signed sets from uh, Gaudi through through 50s tops and Bowman's. And this was the uh, the best card that we found in there. That's uh, that's amazing. Like. I'm looking at this card, you know, th there's a there's a movement in the hobby for people to buy, you know, lower graded cards that look better than the technical grade. There's there's thought to be value in that. And I, I completely agree with it. This isn't this copy does not look like a two to me. This this would get like a PWCC or an MBA sticker or I appeal uh, designation, I believe, from from any of those companies that do that. I love this copy and you add the autograph which is like perfectly placed on there brian it doesn't get much better the the serial number on the on the psa slab starting with 8720 a, a very newly slabbed card here as well uh you you don't get you don't get any better this is a wonderful potential value buy but maybe not because the card's so nice people are going to clue into just how nice it is do you think that the the grade of two is is going to hold this back or do you think that the that your customers are sophisticated enough to understand that this card presents so much better than the technical grade yeah without a doubt i think the latter i mean anybody that looks at this is going to say this is the best looking two on the planet um when we saw it it was in nine pocket pages we thought it was a six it wasn't until we got it out that we realized what was going on with that little crease, but it's an incredible card. And I think, you know, you mentioned the serial number. We submitted this, we, we submitted it ourselves within the last couple months 
And uh, I, I think it's going to rewrite the pricing for signed mantle cards. It is unbelievable. Jonathan Clark says, hello, AI lit. The MJ sneaker story is amazing. Can't wait to share it. Ed Strauss is a huge fan of yours. Brian says hi from Ed Strauss. There you go. Ed, welcome to the show. Uh, 86 likes his vintage to look vintage with eye appeal. Same here. Mike Petty, his mind is blown. Terp Enforcer says that the grade seems to be very wrong. Brian, do you ever uh, disagree with the grades? Do you do you think the grade is wrong, or you just think that that uh, you know the the hairline crease kept it back? Look, I mean, I think that um, we submitted it hoping that it would get a three. I do think the two is a little harsh, but it's consistent with how PSA has been grading lately. But you know, I, a lot of people probably know I, I used to work for SGC, and we would take complaints all the time from people saying that, you know, we, we undergraded their cards and it's something that PSA Beckett, no matter who your grader of choice is, you hear grading is meant to call attention to flaws. Um, and it's up to the bidders to bid and, and pay more for, for better looking examples. So, you know, a two on this calls out that there is a flaw, but the bidders will reward it and pay more for eye appeal because it's not your average two. Yeah, boy, is it. Ev and you know what? Let's just look at the registration for a moment, which can often be an issue with this card. Uh, but this copy seems to have absolutely wonderful registration. I'm not going to say it's 100% perfect, but I struggle to see anywhere that it isn't. Uh, the, the the name bar, the black name bar behind the, the, the Mickey Mantle words is nice and dark and black. A, a light snow effect showing, but barely just a absolutely killer copy jake doll thinks it's awesome and turp enforcer says it's so bright and clean have to agree with all those comments i'd like to welcome we got over 40 people watching on x formerly known as twitter so welcome to the uh, everybody watching over there and please feel free to share some comments with us all right brian let's go to the next item we have a psa 10 Michael Jordan, 86 Fleer rookie. I think the bid just went from 70 to 82,500 with that refresh. Now there's about 320 or so of these in the population. Brian, what are your current thoughts on this exact on the Michael Jordan PSA 10 86 Fleer rookie card as far as sort of being a beacon of the hobby? Uh, you know, this a lot of people watch the Jordan rookie and they will gauge the overall health of the hobby based on how this card is doing. Do you think that that's still relevant today? And what are your general thoughts on this card? Well, I mean, I think that it's a card that certainly has its place in the hobby health discussion. I think we've seen a tremendous amount of them obviously come up for sale over the last several years because the pricing just took off in 2020 and 2021, and that flushed a lot of them out. Um, so, you know, do I think that the the Jordan pricing necessarily is truly indicative of the larger hobby? No, not always. But what we have seen is that pricing for Jordan 10s has rebounded a little bit from where it was uh, 6, 12 months ago. And, and that's encouraging. Um, this one's a really good looking example. You know, uh, not all 10s are created equal. Sometimes you see registration issues. Sometimes you see snow. Sometimes you see light border wear. Um, this one's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, definitely a nice copy, and uh, like you said, this is this is this is a uh, it's I I think this is you know it's definitely a top three most iconic cards in the hobby. Uh, Turp Enforcer lets us know here the last ten sold for three hundred k plus, so uh, we'll see what happens with this one. But uh, the auction is running through until the twenty first, I believe. Is that correct? The yeah, twenty first, twenty first of April. Yeah, so seventeen days in the auction, but. Uh, Get your bids in. And of course, just on the bottom of the screen, you can view, register, and bid all these items. 3,800 of them. We're only going to cut, we're only going to cover less than a percent of them tonight. Okay. Brian, this next card is a card that, you know, I spend a lot of time analyzing Wayne Gretzky rookie cards. This one, it's a, it's a, well, just jump from 67.5 to $75,000. It's a 1979 Opeachy version, not the tops. This is the Opeachy version. I believe the pop is in the 90s somewhere i'm not sure if you yeah it looks like it's going to be somewhere in the paragraph here of the 11,685 examples only two have graded higher i believe there's about 90 something psa nines they're not all the same yeah. all they are not all the same and brian i looked at this copy 
earlier today. And I got to tell you, and I'm not, this is me, you know, this is just the way I feel. This copy, in my opinion, is nicer than both of the PSA 10s. I think this is, this is probably, I don't know if I've seen a nicer nine, to be honest with you. And I, I believe that, you know, there are nines that are nicer than the 10s, maybe even eights or eight and a halfs. This copy, I I love this copy, Brian. This is, to me, a very strong nine. The corners, the edges are wonderful. The registration, look at the placement of that oil drop. The magenta plate is perfectly placed. The yellow plate's a little bit low. That's the only issue. But look at his face is nice and clear. The word oilers uh, is, a, you can see the yellow plate coming down just a little bit, but there's no gaps between the black lines, these thin black lines, and the white or the blue. We often see that. This copy is absolutely spectacular, Brian. Like, I don't know if you, do you know how good this nine is relative to others? Well, look, I I, I uh, always defer to you when it comes to hockey, but we've handled a bunch of these Opeachy Gretzkys. We've handled several nines. We've handled some really good looking eight and 8.5s. And yeah, we, we agree. This one is very high end for the grade. Uh, you'll see there it has a sticker on it. Um, so we're not the only ones that think that. But uh, yeah, it's it's a really exceptional copy. Yeah, so the E, so that's PWCC's top 15% designation i gotta tell you uh i've seen my fair share of these cards i don't know how this didn't even get their their s uh designation which is superior it's got a slight blemish here but that's on the back that doesn't bother me whatsoever uh to me this this is probably worthy of the top five percent of the of the nines at least based on my personal experience and what i've seen i I actually can't believe how nice this card is. <laughs> it's been an hour just talking about this Gretzky. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably could. Daniel wants to know, is there a link? Daniel, robertedwardauctions.com. Just like on just, just on the screen right now, you can see the website, Daniel. Check it out. And it's one of the first lot. It's lot number eight when you go into the auction. Yeah, yeah. just unbelievable. And okay. if, uh, if someone like Daniel isn't registered with us, you can pop in, you can view, you can sign up. If you're not sure that you want to bid, you can request a catalog, send you out a catalog free of charge. So lot, lots of options to participate. Yeah. And their catalogs are, are also amazing. Like your catalogs, I think are collectible themselves. They're pretty, um, pretty Travis. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I I'm sure mine will arrive here in the next few days. Uh, Travis trail. I, I highly, highly doubt that this card is, is not, this is definitely in my opinion, a pack pulled copy i believe i've seen uh, i've seen well enough of them uh, that ha that i'm certain are uh sort of that sheet cut pack pulled this one to me is definitely you can see right there you can you can see it's it's a wonderful pack pulled copy stuke says yeah you well you don't that's why the populations are so low on these gretzky uh rookie cards okay you ready to go to the next one brian yeah let's do it all right next item we've got is a newly discovered 1910 to 11 T206 white border Ty Cobb portrait, red background. This is a PSA 2.5 with a broadleaf back. Going on to say that this is the only confirmed example. Brian, what does this all mean? That means that until about six weeks ago, nobody knew that this card existed. So uh, PSA and a couple researchers online keep a list of of the front and back combinations that are known to exist so broadleaf cigarettes was a company that advertised on t206s we had never seen ty cobb and broadleaf cigarettes with the 350 subjects back uh, ever before we had seen a 460 uh broadleaf 460 which we sold a couple years ago but this came to us we got a a, a fresh to the hobby t206 set collection and this was in it. Uh, absolutely blew us away. Uh, everybody in the office <laughs> went crazy. And uh, we got it graded by PSA. And it should really stop any T206 collector in his tracks. Yeah, like the T206 collectors are some of the most uh, committed collectors out there working on their set. And or they just want, you know, the Hall of Fame, whichever 
whatever subsection of the set that they're looking for, whether it be the complete or, or a single player, all the backs. So anyone who's who wants all the Ty Cobb backs, this just entered the discussion. This changes the PSA set registry. This adds another card to that. And all the people competing on there for the highest grade or just to complete it, only one person that we know of can actually have that now. Do you think we're going to see a fierce battle for this? I think we are. What do you think? Have you heard any rumblings amongst some of your clients who caught wind that this was in the auction? Yeah, this is this is a really exciting card for the reason that you said. I mean, up until recently, you didn't know that you needed it. Uh, you thought that maybe it might exist. It was a unicorn, uh, but you didn't even consider it a white whale, so to speak, because you didn't know it was out there. So it's it's a super cool card. And already, I mean, it might have 15 or 16 different bids on it already. Um, so it's going to it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, 14 different bids already. 14 bids are right. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, hey, congratulations on discovering this. I mean, this is a discovery. This is new hobby information. That's that's that, you know, we get headlines throughout the hobby nowadays, but that should be big news. Was it big news? Did I miss it that there's a newly discovered broadleaf Ty Cobb? Is this something that people are talking about on Net 54 and amongst the vintage, the real vintage collectors out there? So we actually have some more information about the card coming out in conjunction with the auction launching. Um, but uh, I think I think you'll see some discussions pretty soon. Okay, that's really cool to hear. All right, well, stay tuned for that, everybody. And let's go to the next item, Brian, which is a, another T206 Ty Cobb. This is the Sweet Caporal background uh, or reverse, I should say, the T206 white border, red background, SGC8. Now, this copy, this copy, let me just get it back up there bigger. Uh, this looks amazing. Look at the look at the beautiful centering. First of all, the yeah. white borders are spectacular. The corners, you can see that they're they're sharp, but they're not, you know, they're not gem mint sharp. The edges are wonderful. Like this is this is a this is almost a perfect card. And I don't mean perfect condition. I mean, yeah. a perfect card. Like an it. ideal specimen, yeah. Ideal. I Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, any sharper of corners, you, you're almost like, wow, too good to be true. Yeah. This thing is just glorious. Tell us your thoughts on this card. Maybe a bit of backstory if you have it. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a card that we've sold before. But every time I've seen this card, uh, I'm struck by the centering and the colors and, and registration. You know, T206 Cobb can come with some registration issues. You can see shift in the hair. You can see shift in the eyes and the lips. Uh, this one's pretty spot on. Uh, not a lot of flaws with this card. Uh, eight is among the highest grades that SGC has ever given to a red cob. Um, so it's it's a pretty cool card. Certainly is. We're at 52,500. Let's see what happens if we refresh. We're still there. Two bids. Again, everybody, this auction, you know, officially opens tomorrow but it is open for the preview people who you know caught on to this show today and uh you've got there you got 17 days to bid but uh get those bids in early so we don't forget you guys will send out reminder emails and all that from the website won't you oh yeah by the time this is over you uh everybody and their mother will know about this auction <laughs> awesome okay good stuff good stuff. all right well let's keep on cruising through Let's have a look at the next item that we've selected. And as Daniel A says, PSA 10 foil Jeter is so rare. Yes, it is. And that's what we have here. The 1993 SP Derek Jeter foil rookie card in a PSA 10 holder. We last checked in. It was 85000 It's now at $92,500. And so let's see. Of the 24,107 rookie cards submitted, only 21 have received a grade of 10. Only 21 people can own a Derek Jeter SP rookie, which is his his you know most uh, important. Is it? Would you say it's his most important rookie card? Yeah, I think it's the one that everybody wants. I mean, 93 tops uh, is there too, but this one just blows it away. And for high grade collectors, good luck. I mean, this is the first one that's come up for sale in about 16 months. And that's, that's crazy when you think about it. Uh, pop of 21. We talked about the Jordan earlier. There's, there's over 325, 330 tens of that. Um, so this is 15, 16 times rarer than the Jordan. 
uh, this is one that I'm really personally excited to follow because it just doesn't happen. No, this is when you are, when we're talking about an important hall of fame rookie uh, and you know, uh, when I say, you know, an important hall of fame rookie who still has many people alive that saw him play, like he didn't play that long ago. So he's still in the public conscious. He's involved in the hobby. This there's only 21 of them. That's, that's kind of mind blowing to think for a card from 1993. We were just talking about the Gretzky rookies where, you know, OPG PSA 10 tops PSA 10. There's only two of each that exist, but that card was also 14 years younger. And they used, you know, horrible cutting mechanisms. They, they had the technology uh, really ready for a card like this when the foil came out. And yeah, only 21 people can own one of these. It's a great for the set registry competitors Sitting again, sitting at 92,000, sorry, 90, yeah, 92.5 right now, Brian. And um, I'm really interested to see what this one ends up doing as well. I just want to say hello, Orlando from the A Collector's Dream YouTube channel, a great uh, vintage collector who was actually on Sports Cards Live about a month ago. Orlando, great to see you, says he already got an email from REA. And Daniel A says, I just went on the website. What a beautiful auction. The Gretzky is a blazer. It absolutely is, Daniel. I you could tell I couldn't I couldn't say enough about it. All right, let's move on from the Jeter. And we here we go. Here's a more modern card. 2017 National Treasures, Patrick Mahomes, rookie patch auto. This is the green foil parallel version, numbered out of 15, number three of 15, with a nice three-color patch. The autograph is absolutely stunning. The card grades out a BGS nine with centering nine, edges nine, corners nine, five, surface eight, five, and the autograph graded out a 10, I believe. We'll just go to the back. There's the autograph grade right there. Comes in a 10 as well. So Brian, this is, you know, this is a, a more modern card, REA. You know, I think I think historically people look at REA as a vintage auction company, but you're not anymore. You're, you're, you're a sports card memorabilia auction company. Talk a bit about this card, but also the modern cards entering your catalogs over the recent years. Yeah. So, I mean, this Mahomes card is quickly becoming one of his iconic cards. And I think that, uh, you know, he doesn't need any introduction despite only having been in the, in the league for what, seven seasons, six, seven seasons. Um, he's, he's one of the greatest. Uh, so this, even though it doesn't have any bids right now, this is going to get a lot of action and, and it just keeps with the, the theme of REA, serving more and more collectors. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, we were we were baseball only, but the hobby is so much bigger. And once we started leaning into other areas, uh, doing more memorabilia, doing more with other sports, tickets, photography, non-sports, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, there's really something for everyone. We wanted to be that destination for all collectors. Um, and so it's exciting for us. It's exciting for our bidders. We get emails all the time, get more hockey, get more modern, get more Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and so we're, we're trying, and, and it's fun. It's okay. Glad to hear that you're trying. May as well. Bring more eyeballs to the, to the platform. Jeff Hart is with us. Jeff, good to see you, as always. It says it's an amazing auction. And Daniel is asking, will there be an auction watch party for when this auction ends? Stay tuned, Daniel, uh, to be determined at this point. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Brian, uh, I, I did notice this card too when I was getting set up and looking at the auction preview earlier today. This is the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle, the most iconic card in the hobby. This is a PSA 5 version. And what I love about this card in particular is that side-to-side -side centering. It's basically bang on perfect. Top to bottom, it's a little bit high, but that's where if I'm going to have, you know, if my card isn't going to be perfectly centered, this is as perfectly centered as you're going to get for, you know, for, for a five in this condition. It's absolutely beautiful. You see what I'm like? Look at that. It's a little high, but it doesn't, you look at the card, it doesn't throw you off from an eye appeal perspective. At least it doesn't throw me off. I also like that it's the type of this card that has the solid line along the bottom here, the bottom of, of the Yankees logo square. It's also it also isn't missing that one pixel from this area, I believe it is. What it's just a just a beautiful card, Brian. Tell us a bit about it in your own words. 
Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. If it's going to be off centered, that's the, the perfect imperfection, the, the top to bottom centering, uh, dialed in 50, 50 side to side, great color, no, no real print issues to speak of. Um, and just an iconic card. I mean, you see it behind me. It's a card that everybody, everybody in the hobby learns about, knows about, wants, covets. Um, and if you want one and you can afford this one, it's about as nice as of a five as you'll see. I don't know if I lost your audio or everyone lost your audio. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm back. I don't know what happened. I, I, I hit my microphone with my hand by mistake and I hit the mute button. Okay, sorry. What I was just going to say, well, I just wanted to take a look at it. The top left corner is beautiful. The top edge is beautiful. The top right corner is beautiful. A little bit of gloss loss up at the top, but beautiful. That Hard to see on the white. The bottom right is great. That right edge is wonderful. The bottom edge to the extent I can see it looks great. The bottom left corner, you can see a bit of bit of surface gloss loss right there, but still a nice nice corner for the 5. A little bit of a little bit of snow pieces here and there, but boy, like you said, this is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. We were at 47,000, we're at $55,000 on it right now. Yeah, fills yeah. out the holder nice. It's a big example. We've seen some size variation in 52 mantles over the years. Um, this one's really, really nice. Amazing, amazing. Turp Enforcer says it's best to be a multi-hobby auction house because everyone chases their childhood. Yeah, yeah, well said, Turp Enforcer. And just want to, again, mm -hmm. welcome everybody to the show on YouTube. Uh, we got about 50 people watching us on X at the moment. So welcome to all of you guys watching on Twitter slash X. Let's go to the next item. So this is one that, you know, it's 1970 tops Hank Aaron, uh, but it's a PSA 10. It's a gem mint copy. These black borders make any card from this set almost impossible in a PSA 10 holder, only four in the population. Brian, tell us a little bit about, you know, how rare this is uh, from, from what you've seen over the years. It's funny. One of the first sets that I ever collected as a kid was 71 tops. Can't tell you why exactly. Probably got some at a garage sale. And I distinctly remember how they were often more white than black. They're, the borders are so sensitive. Uh, they scuff so easily. They chip so easily. And for this card to survive the way it has, for it to be Hank Aaron, um, only 10 known to, or excuse me, only four tens known in the pop report. Uh, it's just a killer card. <laughs> it really is amazing. And it's another one where there's a lot of people out there that are working on the Hank Aaron run. There's a lot of people that are working on the 1971 <laughs> tops run. Some people working on the Hall of Famers from 1971 stats. Uh, I just refreshed. I think we went from 28,000 or 27 to 38. So there's already action on this card. Only four people can own this Hank Aaron card in a PSA 10 holder. Uh, really an amazing amazing specimen anything else about this before we move along i would i would only say that it's the perfect time to add one to your collection monday is the 50th anniversary of him breaking babe ruth's record so uh right. it's ideal timing there we go all right let's let's see what we have next all right here we go i i say that because i love this card perhaps my favorite card in all of sports cards the 1948 leaf jackie robinson rookie card this is in a psa 7 Holder Brian, before uh, when I first loaded up this page a few hours ago, we were at twenty nine thousand dollars. Let's see if it's moved at all. Hasn't moved in the last couple hours. Still at twenty nine thousand. But this is a. I just I love the card, Brian. I pulled mine out. Do you mind if I show mine? I'm gonna. I pulled out cards that you know that oh, I yeah. own. I love it. So I have the same card. Mine is in a PSA six hold. I'm just gonna show mine for a moment, guys, because I want to just make a point here. Mine is all mine is off centered, similar to the one in the in the auction tonight. Uh, but I love it. I it is I love it. I, I love it off centered and everything. And I've owned this card for over ten years, so you know I've grown quite attached to it. Uh, this is a this is a it's in a PSA seven holder, as mentioned. I just want to have a peek at it, Brian. And uh, actually, why don't you say a few words about it first, and then we'll take a look at it. Yeah, I mean it's a great card. You mentioned the centering. I mean you can't you can't uh, ignore it, but it's not it's not too bad, frankly. I mean I've seen I've seen a lot worse. What strikes me about this, similar to the fifty one Bowman mantle, it's so often plagued by print issues, whether it's registration or PD or 
or some other blemish. This one is really nice. And you notice even from the copy that you showed, um, the yellow comes in variety of different strengths, vibrance. Uh, this one's pretty, pretty vibrant. Um, so I, I, I like the card and, and I can look past the centering because the corners are pretty sharp. The color is very bold. The registration's near perfect. Um, so I think it's a, I think it's a nice card. Yeah. The, I was comparing it to mine, uh, this, you know, I think our centerings are very similar, but on this copy, the edges and the corners are sharper than what I, than the card that I own. A uh, slight registration issue here. You got the magenta plate coming off his face a little bit here, but that's about the extent of it. Overall, you know, a nice copy. You know, the the people who who play centering above everything, this copy probably won't be for them. But for people who want to get a nice call, a nice card, if this was a centered seven, everything else was equal. Brian, uh, first of all, it might not be a seven if this was if this was better centered. It might be a seven and a half or even an eight, but. This one might be a might be a good opportunity for someone to pick up a, a PSA seven copy of this Jackie Robinson rookie card for you know it might go for lower than your average seven because of this because of such a premium place on centering, which I think is just the reality of the situation. Do you do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, so, I mean centering has definitely taken a big uh, a big role in the, the growth of the hobby and the explosion in prices. People are putting a lot of emphasis on that, but. For every guy that loves centering, there's a guy that loves corners, and and uh, you know this card's going to really speak to somebody for that reason. So it'll be it'll be fun to watch. It's not for everyone, but it's a great looking card. It is. It is. It is great. Let's take a quick look at the back. There's the back of it. Looks nice and clean. Yeah, lovely card. I I just love it. Okay, from the same set. This is a this is a beast. This card is an absolute beast of a card. We went from no bids a couple hours ago to blazing past the starting bid of 25,000 all the way to 43,000 now. 1948 Leaf Satchel Page uh, rookie card, Brian, and I believe rookie card. And uh, this is a very rare card for 48 Leaf. This the, the condition is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, Orlando from Collector's Dream, he says, it's an amazing card. And I think he's under, I think, I think Orlando is understating, <laughs> not on purpose, just how amazing this card is. But Brian, you don't see this card in any condition very often. Why don't you speak to that from your experience? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a card that we, I mean, REA, we're fortunate. We get a lot of rare cards and every auction has some killer rare cards in it. But we might go a year or a year and a half sometimes without seeing a 48 leaf page. It's a short print. Uh, half the set was short printed page being one of them. And when you find them, they're in really low grade for whatever reason, all the short prints are very tough to find in high grade. So this is really a miracle card, so to speak. The centering is perfect. The color is incredible. Uh, corners are great. I mean, this is a card that, uh, you wonder how it survived this this long and this well, but man, it's beautiful. It's unbelievable. Travis Trail says might be the nicest page I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen one this nice. Uh, you know, among in, in amongst my friends who collect pre-war stuff, and they show if they you know usually they're picking up a PSA one or a two or a three, and it it's got creases through it and everything. This thing is has held up unbelievably. Jeffrey Hart also knows his vintage says what a great page and turpin forcer says page is the best baseball pitcher ever to play well that's high praise right there turp this is a very special card brian i'm looking for this is why i think this might be so far for me may, you know this in the autograph mantle and the autograph garrig never mind the jordan shoes those are their own stratosphere this to me is like the most interesting card so far uh, that we've seen that I'm very interested to see the result. And as Jeff Hart says, it is just so rare. Yeah. All right. Well, let's leave Satchel behind and move on to another great card. Gosh, they're great cards. 61 Fleer, Wilt Chamberlain in a PSA 8.5 holder. I pulled mine out because, you know, I like to pull my cards out. This is mine. Mine's mine's nice too, Brian. Yeah, mine's, on mine, mine's a seven and a half, a beautifully yeah. centered seven and a half. Uh, I'm excited to look closer at, at this eight and a half in the auction here. Let's hit refresh. We were at $28,000 a couple hours ago. We're now at 29. Let's make this thing bigger. And Brian, 
the first thing that I'm noticing about this card, which is really hard to find on this card, is the registration. Yeah. I'm, I got to go back and show something on mine just so people can make a distinction here. You look at my copy here and you look under his armpit and you can see that thin white line that kind of goes up and comes down the edge of his arm. So that shouldn't really be there, but you see it on several copies that, you know, those should be lined up. Now let's go look back at the copy here and you can see that, you know, you see like a speck of white in the armpit, but look how much better lined up that is. Amazing registration on this card. And the centering on this is just spectacular. It's a very difficult card centering wise. With that said, Brian, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. So many years ago when I worked at SGC, I got to witness somebody opening a box of 61 Fleer basketball, if you believe it or not. Uh, didn't sell for anywhere near what they sell today, but I watched every pack be open and the quality control was was not that good. There were there were miscuts, there were off centers. Um, so to think that this card with all the quality control issues that Fleer had in 61 survived as nice as it did with the near perfect registration, with the centering, with the colors. I mean, Jeff Hart, who's watching, he knows basketball. This is a phenomenal example of probably one of the most iconic, important basketball cards. Jeff is also the high bidder on it, at least at least for a day, he says. Jeff, uh, thank you for bidding, Jeff, and, uh, and uh, good luck to you on it. Turbine Force says Mr. 100 for Will Chamberlain. For sure. He goes on to say, when you ask Michael Jordan who his goat is, it's Wilt Chamberlain. That's really important stuff right there. It's like Wayne Gretzky to Gordy Howe, or I'm sure all the great hitters in baseball to Babe Ruth. It just tells you who who's really in charge. Travis says 61 Fleer is the goat set. Yeah, hard to disagree with that, Travis. So many great rookies in the 61 Fleer set. I love the design of it. I, I just It screams 1961. It screams Fleer. This card has it all. It has it all, and uh, I don't know if you can even see behind me, but I have a, I have a paint. Oh, you can see, yeah, it's right there. I have a painting of this card on my wall right over there. That's how much I like the Wilt Chamberlain rookie. Okay, take a quick look at the back of it, and then we'll go to the next item. There's the back. Yeah, just a, an amazing, amazing card sitting at twenty nine thousand. Let's give another refresh. See if we've had a bid. Not in the last ten minutes. So, Brian, let's go on to the next item, which is the. 1968 tops Nolan Ryan rookie, but this is the Milton Bradley variation of it shared with, of course, Jerry Kuzman right there. And it's a PSA nine. Now, why don't you, for anyone who might not know, I'm sure most people do know, but for those that don't tell us what this Milton Bradley designation was all about. Yeah. So, I mean, Milton Bradley probably rings a bell with people as the, the game manufacturer. And in 1968, they issued cards uh, including baseball cards that mirrored the the tops issue. And the easiest way you'll notice, if you know anything about 68 tops, you'll notice the back is this bright yellow. And that's the clearest indicator that it's a Milton Bradley. Sometimes you'll see a white line on the front as well. Um, but uh, this separates it from the regular set. Rare. I, I don't know the exact pop off the top of my head, but fractional compared to the the standard tops. And uh, a nine. I mean, it's just an incredible card, iconic, vintage, huge Hall of Fame rookie card, um, and just extra rare with this Milton Bradley designation. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we see these every so often, but not as much as you obviously, obviously see the standard tops issue. I'm just checking the population right now. I have found the population of this card. Now, it's mind blowing. It, there's only five copies of this card in a PSA 9 mint holder. How many 10s do you think there are, Brian? I would guess none, but yeah. none. Yeah. None higher, exactly. There are none higher. This is one of the best five copies of this card that exists on the planet, at least in a PSA slab. That's so elusive, Brian. Like this is a this is a big deal card. This should be on this should be in Forbes. This should be in the New York Times. Like this is a big deal, right? Uh, big deal for sure in the hobby, and I don't know if it if it goes to the New York Times level, but uh, hugely important if you're a Nolan Ryan collector, hugely important if you like rare stuff. Um, so yeah, this will be fun to watch. I, I think it's, I would, yeah. it's, it's the first time we've offered one this high. 
If I was uh, a staffer at the New York Times, you can you better believe we'd be talking about this card. It's it's got a bid of twenty thousand five hundred, so two bids have come in already on it uh, today in the early bidding preview window of of the auction, which again ends right here. You can see on April twenty first, so that is seventeen days away. Turpin Forcer, when I was a kid, I wanted a Nolan Ryan rookie badly. Yeah, I, I hear you. So did I. So did I. Okay. Let's keep on going. That's a that's a crazy card. Okay, another beauty right here. 53 tops, Mickey Mantle, PSA 7. We have an opening bid was 10,000. The bids were up to 12 earlier today. It's up to 15.5 now. Brian, this card to me, it's somewhat it, it it imagine if the 52 tops mantle didn't exist. This would be considered, I believe, among if not the most iconic card in the hobby because of its beauty it's some people think it's nicer than the 52 tops version i think it's right up there i absolutely love 53 tops this card look at it it's majestic does it is it at all overshadowed by the 52 what are your thoughts how they kind of play off each other yeah i mean it's, it's hard not to say that the 52 overshadows 53 because of how important it is to the hobby but 53 i i've always thought is is just dynamite um, every example I see looks three-dimensional to me, virtually regardless of grade. I just think they did such a great job with the artwork. Um, it just it just captures Mantle in a way that the 52 doesn't, I think. And I don't know if it's the color combination or, or what, but uh, really special. And for a seven, this one's pretty beautiful. Uh, you know, side-to-side -side centering is what it is, but it's got a nice little rough cut there. It's got really sharp corners, uh, great color, no PD. Um, a couple points of centering to the left and you'd be looking at a dynamite eight. Yeah. And where we often are concerned on these 53s is right around the bottom border where you have the, the red on this card. You no, know, the, the Willie Mays has the black going on and the bottom looks absolutely perfect. You see minor touch on the bottom left corner, but that for me as a collector doesn't bother me. I almost like there to be something there. Just, you know, this is a, Stunning, stunning copy. I could just sit here and keep looking at it, but we got a show to do. So let's keep on moving along. Turpin Forster says, I just love this year, 53 tops. It is art. And I, I do too. The maze, Brian, the maze from this set might be my favorite, you know, image on a baseball card of all time. You know, his full body standing there, ready to pick up a grounder. The hobby with cage has joined and says great color and registration on that 1953 Mickey Mantle Cage, welcome to the show. All right, next up, I brought. I had to pull out my Ted Williams for this too, Brian. 1939 play ball, Ted Williams, rookie card in a PSA 8 holder. Current bid, 11000 earlier today. Let's refresh. We're still at $11,000 right now, Brian. This 1939 play ball, I think, is sort of an underrated set because it's black and white. And if you fast forward two years to 41, they had the colored play ball set with the beautiful DiMaggio, the beautiful Ted Williams. I love the 41s, but to me, the 39s are two years older. That's the rookie card for Ted Williams. I have my beautiful PSA 5 copy right here that I, you know, hey, when I'm looking at nice cards and I own one of them, I want to kind of take mine out and just enjoy it. That's the copy yeah. I own. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to be very happy for whoever picks up this PSA 8 from the auction. But Brian, why don't you tell us about this particular copy? And I'm just noticing how, you know, there's no color, but it's the the the, the colors that are there are boldly printed. Really well done. Really well done. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, even though it is a black and white set, that's what I've always really admired about high end 39 play balls is that when done right, they're actually pretty captivating cards. Um, so I think this example grabs you. I think it's got a really nice image. You can see some PD on some of these examples, but this one, the background's pretty nice and clean. So um, a really, really strong, big example of this card. Yeah, the back is is just perfect. It looks just beautiful. And, uh, you know, I was just looking at the corners on mine, and, you know, mine's a five. This The corners on this are just spectacular. Look at this thing. The only thing holding this card back is the the slight shift to the right. Yeah. That's it. What a copy. Okay. 
All right, let's check out the next item, guys, on another great card. What do you know? 57 tops, Bill Russell in a PSA 7. Brian, um, look, often with this card, we're going to see snow or even, even worse, we're going to see fish eyes throughout this black background here. I see none of that on this copy. I also want to point something out. This little this little thing right here, that's like a light from the, that is on all the copies. My copy has it. I've never seen one without this. So that isn't a that isn't an issue with the card. I think that's like a light hanging in the room where this where this picture was originally taken. You know, the centering on this is really good for the card. This is an almost impossible card to find centered and uh the edges, the corners, Brian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna examine it while you say your words about it, please. Yeah, just super tough to find in high grade. I mean, I still remember the first time I ever handled an eight. I couldn't believe that it, uh, what I was looking at. I had only ever seen fours and fives from this set. So another set that's really plagued by condition issues. Um, printing mostly can be very distracting on some of these examples. This one's really nice, um, and I think it just really speaks to the quality of the collectors that uh you know have chosen to consign all these cards i mean they they're discerning they they're they're collectors that are hold out for really nice looking examples and i think even if you go deeper into the auction you see eye appeal is a real theme on a lot of these cards yeah yeah i mean the borders are nice and bright on this i i really like the copy cage says most eights in in this card have worse centering this one is pretty good yeah, I mean he's he's right. You you see this card, Brian, where it's like the top border of the card is at the top of his head. You know, it's like it'll cut off like way down here, almost half an inch below what we're seeing here. So this card, they they were cutting these things all over the place. I think Cage is right. This one is pretty good. Turpin Forcer reminds us that Bill Russell has eleven championships. I you know I have a copy of this too. Mine's a six. It's a pretty nice six, but it, it doesn't compare to, to the seven. I'll just flash it up there like that. Okay, let's go on to the next item. Uh, let's see what we're at here. We were at 10,000. 10, was the current bid. Have there been any bids lately? Yep, we're up to 12,500 on the PSA 7, Bill Russell. That's going to look good and make somebody very happy to add it to their collection. Before we talk about this photograph, I want to bring up Carl's comment. He says, I consigned my first card to REA 1934 Gaudi Lou Gehrig PSA 1. Can you show this one? Uh, Carl, let us get through the 10 or so more items. And then I'm going to star your comment so we can hopefully get a look at it. That happens to be a wonderful card that you can sign as well. Okay, Brian. 1969 Cincinnati Red Stockings Peck and Snyder advertising trade card in an SGC one. Is this the item that's known as the oldest baseball card? Yeah. So I'm actually going to take you back a hundred years because it's 1869. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is widely considered one of the first baseball cards. I mean, there are CDVs and team cabinets that date to earlier, but this is the perfect combination of team image, uh, larger distribution, advertising on the back. So really significant card, um, any way you slice it. And you see there, it's got some big names. It's got Harry Wright. It's got George Wright. Um, it's got the Red Stocking Baseball Club of Cincinnati along the bottom. It's got a nice advertisement on the back. You don't always see these with advertisements. Um, so just a very special, very special card. Look at that. It's for me. It's for skates. This isn't even a hockey card. It's a baseball card. And they're advertising skate blades on it. Very cool. Now, this thing, it's pretty beat up, as you can see. But do we have an idea? Like, does the hobby have an idea of how many of these are known right now? I don't know the pop. I mean, there's there's uh, certainly more than a, a couple, um, you know, maybe 10 to 20, if I had to guess. Uh, and I might even be overstating it. I mean, it's it's a card that we only get to handle once every five years or so at best, probably. Um, so it's it's really special to have this one. Yeah, amazing. Amazing piece of history right there. Wow. Okay, let's keep on rolling. We've got a 1956 Mickey Mantle Grayback SGC9 highest graded. And I notice it's got that nice adornment b 
being the MBA gold sticker on it as well. Mike Baker authenticated, gives his opinion on eye appeal within the technical grade. And I believe this has his, I think there might be a black sticker as well, but the gold being, uh, you know, the gold standard, if you will. And from looking at it myself, yeah, this card is very nice. And one thing I'm noticing, which I've never noticed before on the 56s, Brian, I don't have a lot of experience with 56 tops, card, baseball cards, but I'm noticing that if you're going to assess the centering of this card, you cannot do it over here. You can't yeah. do it over here to over here because look at how the yellow and the red banners are set lower than the top of the image over here. They're centered in this white square. So to, to properly gauge centering, you've got to measure this, the, the right side of the front of the top of the right side of the card to the bottom over there. In any event, I just noticed that, Brian. Is that something that you were aware of? Because it's new to me. I just saw that for the first time. Yeah, it's it's one of those quirky little nuances that you know you you pick up by handling so many of these, but not everybody knows it. I mean, I remember having to explain to somebody that fifty four tops uh, aren't supposed to have a top border. <laughs> so yeah. you know uh, that's the beautiful thing. These auctions sometimes serve as teaching moments and learning experiences for collectors to see things that they didn't know existed. Yeah, exactly. A beautiful, beautiful copy in the SGC nine holder, as mentioned. Back is just sharp. Nice and clean. Look at that. Basically fresh out of the pack, this card looks, Brian, to me. We're sitting at a current bit of 12.5 a couple hours ago, and we're up to 13,500 on this 1956 grayback Mickey Mantle. And before we leave this card, Brian, grayback, whiteback, which is the rarer, thought to be the rarer version? So I had always thought that uh, whitebacks were the tougher ones, but I think there's a... There's a um... So white and gray backs are in the first 180 cards, I believe. Um, and there's a segment of them that the gray backs are actually tougher. So I don't know which one for mantles tougher, but uh, I had always thought it was the white back. All right. Well, thank you for that. And next item, we got a, hey, a modern card, a 2000 Bowman Chrome refractor, Tom Brady, rookie card, PSA 9. We Let's see if we have an opening bid. No opening bid yet, but we're not even officially open until tomorrow. Brian, this to me is, you know, I used to think his SP Authentic rookie card was kind of like the, the standard non-low-end rookie card, you know, not, not going to be the contender's autograph either, the champ ticket, any of that. But now I think this, this refractor is kind of, I don't own a Brady rookie right now. I've owned a few in the past. This is the, this is the Brady rookie that I now would covet if and when I decide to acquire one. It would be a Bowman Chrome, and hopefully it would be a refractor. This is in the PSA 9 holder. And the centering on these, Brian, it's so easy to gauge. You just, the, you just look at these little niches here on the left, and you compare them to the right. That's how I do it. This looks to be almost perfectly centered. What are your thoughts on this card, Tom Brady in the hobby? What would you like to tell us about this? So I agree with you. I mean, I only own one Brady card and I own the Bowman Chrome base myself. Uh, I've always been drawn to it. I just like the presentation, the color combination. Just always thought it was a cool looking card. Um, the refractor obviously takes it up a notch. And uh, this is the first one that we've offered in some time. Hasn't opened yet, but doesn't mean anything. A lot of time left. And I think that, you know, Brady... Like I said with Mahomes earlier, nobody needs to be told how great he was. It's just a question of you know how much higher his stuff will go. So I think uh, I think this is a nice card, good looking example for a nine. Hard to pick at what keeps it from a ten, but a really really strong card. Yeah, I mean it, it's always hard to grade a card in two dimensions on your computer monitor, but oftentimes with this card, it's you know <clears throat> these dark borders. Maybe it's probably got something to do with something on the back, although. This is absolutely perfect. Like I, I'm seeing a little bit of white on the back top corner there, but that's only under magnification. Like, and of course that matters, but I can't, I can't tell why this wouldn't be a 10. The centering certainly isn't hurting it. So great card. Could have just been the day it got graded. You, we just don't know. All right. Amazing, amazing piece. I love it. And now we've got a 1969 Tops basketball complete set of 99 cards, number four on the PSA set registry. So if anyone is looking to fast track their way up that ladder, here's your opportunity right here. Tell us about the set. Did this 
do you know anything about the set? Who put it together when they did anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it was <clears throat> put together by a pretty dedicated collector. I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of patience to get only eight and nine PSA eight, PSA nine examples. Uh, this set actually skews more towards the nines. I mean, I think the GPA is uh, eight point seven seven. You see Havlicek rookie there in a nine. The Al Cinder is the key to the set. That's there in an eight. Um, but just a really superb accomplishment. All ninety nine cards, eight or better. And this is actually one of many uh, dozens of complete registry sets that we have from a variety of different sports and non-sports, a uh, big selection of high-grade football, some great high-grade baseball, basketball. Um, so if you, if you want to fast track your way to the top, like you said, um, there's plenty of options. Yeah. Look at this. Like this is, this is amazing. What just an amazing assembly of, these 69 tall boys and like you said you've got the kareem the luau cinder right there the wilt the wilt is absolutely beautiful how is that not a nine <laughs> wow look at this you just don't see this very often unbelievable yeah. unbelievable if i just want to scroll down we can just see all the different pictures included in the auction of all the cards nice write up right here for everybody let's do a quick little refresh see where we're at $110,000 for this complete set, fourth overall on the set registry. So you pick this up, you transfer it to your own set registry account, and there you are. You see yourself right near the top. Anything else on this, Brian? Any other nuance about it that you'd like to mention? No, just, I mean, they're really tough to get in high grade. We've we've submitted over the years plenty of these cards from original owners, fresh collections. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten a nine. So for this to be... Yeah almost 75% nines is pretty wild. Unbelievable. 8.77 grade point average. That brings us to the 1969 Tops Baseball Complete Set, number six on the PSA set registry. I'm, mm. My mind's blown because there are 664 cards. You need like just the shipment of this. That's, that's, a, that's a heavy lot, right? I mean, oh, yeah. there's a lot. That's a big, a big amount of cards, guys. 8.98 grade point average. So a few tens, maybe mostly nines and a couple of eights kind of thing. Like, and it comes with one of my favorite baseball cards of all time. The Reggie Jackson rookie card right there in a PSA eight. I also love the second year Johnny bench right there in a nine. You got Clemente, you got Mays both in a nine Nolan Ryan, beautiful second year in a nine Hank Aaron in an eight Pete Rose in an eight and Mickey Mantle in an eight. Tell us a bit about the 69 set. Yeah, I mean, the 69 set is great. It's the last card in Mantle, first card of Reggie. Um, 664 cards. It would cost you a fortune just to submit it for grading. And then you'd hope that you got the 8s, 9s, and 10s that are here. Um, you'll see there, 57.5. I think this yeah. is going to... I think this is going to explode, frankly. Uh, you've got a bunch of important cards. You've got other, you know, Raleigh Fingers is a Hall of Fame rookie in there. Second year bench. All these cards are in nines. Um, it's just an amazing accomplishment. And and believe it or not, put together by a different collector than the basketball set. But uh, no less persistent, enthusiastic, dedicated. Um, a really, really special set. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars, just over about a hundred bucks a card. I think that works out to. Uh, but you're getting some absolute stunners in there. Now this is this is this might be the coolest complete set yet, just because it's from 1948 Leaf. It's the complete football set, number four on the PSA set registry, six point seven seven grade point average. Brian, I you know, like the baseball set from the same year. I love the use of colors. I love the way they it looks uh very is it is the term art deco? What's the the warholish looks very warholish to me. Yeah. I love it. What do you know about this set? This is actually one of about 15 or so complete uh, registry sets from football, 1948 through 78 tops football, um, all high grade, all top 10 registry sets. 78 is number one on the registry. This 48 set, tremendous uh, selection of Hall of Famers, key rookie cards, similar to 57 tops basketball. You've got a lot of players appearing for the first time. 
Um, this was the first major football set. You know, you have the Mayos from the 19th century, but then football cards took off 50 years. So a uh, very special set, iconic. And this one's pretty high grade. Grades in the six, seven, eight range. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful accomplishment. Really is. It really, really is. 98 cards in the set. Sitting, we we're at 11,000. We're at $12,000 on it right now. And again, we are in the... The auction, it's live, but it officially launches according to the catalog tomorrow. So we're in the very, we're in the pre-bidding stage right now. And uh, you can see there's all there's already action. Robert Scott says, love the nicknames on these cards. Yeah, I noticed that as well. And Orlando, just uh, on another note, says my favorite card ever is in this auction, the 1888 N162 Kelly. Very cool, Orlando. We always appreciate you being in the audience as well as everybody else. And now we have this. You do not want to buy this item, you guys. I'm kidding. You you do, but I do. But I anyway, okay, here we go. 1954 tops hockey, five cent wax pack. I love unopened packs, Brian. I have the hockey run from 1970 through 89, all the different series and uh just the OPCs, the WHAs, the NHLs. I don't have a 54 tops pack. This is the grail to me as far as hockey packs goes how did you guys find this where to come from or you know tell us a bit about this because this is an unbelievable find yeah i had never seen one to be perfectly honest with you uh super rare came to us from a longtime hockey collector uh we got it graded got a six incredible condition um handful of these exist uh, according to the psa population report just incredible. I mean, whether you collect hockey, unopened material, rare items, this is pretty, pretty special. It really is. I was just, I'm just trying to, I'm just going to go to the front. I'm going to, I have to see the population on this. Uh, I'm just going to look that up really quickly. It, the serial number is 87259164, everybody. Let's see what the, the PSA, yeah, this is a population of one in this grade, nine higher. But what's even more important is just how many altogether are there uh, in the in the PSA. Yeah, there's only ten ever graded in the whole world by by PSA. I don't care what the grade is, Brian. Having one of these is that's all that matters. It doesn't. That's all that matters is owning this in its original form. To me, as a collector of packs, this is my grail and. Um, We'll see if things, if, 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 if there's some way that I come into some big money in the next 21 days or by April 21st, I should say, I'm going to win this item. Okay. Love it. That's my favorite item in the auction so far. Next up, everybody, Nin circa 1913, Joe Jackson, original Charles Conlon photograph, PSA DNA. It's a type one. This is an amazing image, Brian. I don't know a lot about type one photos. This we have two bids already. It's already up to fifty two thousand five hundred dollars. Tell us a bit. Tell us a bit about this and the specialness of it. I mean, Charles Conlon, one of the most significant, iconic, important baseball photographers, um, and this is one of his most famous uh, images. Frankly, I mean, Joe Jackson. You see him there, captured um, nineteen thirteen, so several years before nineteen nineteen Black Sox. It's it's stunning. It's haunting. It's 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 a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, and I mean, these these photographs, they're they're truly the closest thing we have to art, really. You know, it's just uh, the imagery is incredible. Yeah. Unbelievable piece. Do you you know, I'm a card guy. I haven't dipped my toes into type one, type two photos from your understanding the demographics of a, of a photo collector are they people who are also collecting cards do they do people go from cards and make their way to photos or the or vice versa can you just give me a a bit of a a rundown on what a photo collector is like i mean i think photo collectors uh come from all parts of the hobby i mean there are certainly people who also collect cards there is a certain subset of photography collectors that only collect images that were used on cards uh, or or used somewhere. I mean, we have a, a number of photos that were used for important cards. Um, 
then there's also people where, you know, photography is in a lot of people's mind in its early stages. So they they see what the prices are doing in cards and they say, well, let me see if I can get in on the ground floor of something else. Um, yeah. So it's an exciting time. You know, this this photo last sold for over one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So there's big money and big attention being paid to these. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. All right. There you go. The Joe Jackson original Charles Coleman photograph circa 1913. Another one. This this is interesting too. 1947 Jackie Robinson rookie photograph image used for Fawcett Comics number two, which I think I can picture in my head. Why don't you uh, tell us what that all means? And there's the back of it right there too. Yeah, so I mean, 1947 and Jackie Robinson <clears throat> probably stick out in a lot of people's minds as his rookie year. And this this photograph was taken early on in his rookie year. Um, great image, again, haunting, beautiful image. Um, the comic uh, book that it was used for had this Robinson photo on the cover. So everything Robinson's been up, we've talked about his leaf earlier. We talked about some of his other cards on past shows. I mean, he's iconic, important. And in the photography realm, this is certainly um, this is certainly important. And and this is actually, I think, dated to the day after he broke the color barrier. So just one of the earliest oh, wow. images uh, from that very important year. Wow, very cool, very cool. Yeah, and just like the photograph itself is just a stunning image of Jackie right there. The photograph seems to be in unbelievable condition as well. I don't know how they grade photographs with this one. Do they grade photographs or do you just get authentic on these things? Yeah, they don't They don't grade them, but they will designate them. So you see there, this is a type one. That means it's the earliest of the types. They have types uh, one, two, three, and four. Each one gets further away from the original negative. So yeah. type one is the best one. <clears throat> I love that it says rookie on there where PSA is recognized that this is from his rookie year. So that's a tough piece. Do you 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 knew with the Joe Jackson that you know this the item had sold for you know a lot one hundred and fifty thousand. I think you said. Do we ha do you have any any idea what one of these has sold for in the past? I think the last sale was in the forty thousand, thirty five, forty thousand dollar range. So uh, not quite at the level of Joe Jackson, but no less important or iconic. Well, it's also thirty five years uh, younger than that Joe Jackson, yeah. so it's a whole different thing. All right, we have an exceptional circa 1920 Babe Ruth single sign baseball PSA DNA 8.5 uh, is the is the grade and the uh, the signature itself has a is a mint nine which is not easy to get. Brian, tell us about this ball because I've seen my share of these Babe Ruth balls. This one looks absolutely clean, like just beautiful. No, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's super early. We know it's around 1920 because of the quotation marks around Babe. It's very helpful in dating and, and pinpointing it to that very early part of his career. I mean, 1920, first year with the New York Yankees. Um, signature is a nine. Probably the only thing keeping it from a 10 is the top R, the top loop of the R there. Uh, mm -hmm. The ball grades an eight, combines for an 8.5, making it one of the best Ruth single sign baseballs in existence. Um, just really, really incredible. The ball grades an eight, the auto grades a nine. To me, it's like the, this is, it's unbelievable as is you add these grading, you know, assignments to it. And it just gives you some confidence in what it is. But like this thing looks stunning. Ah, my gosh, my gosh. All right. Someone's going to be very happy uh, owning this one in the, relatively near future, April 21st. And the last item that was on the agenda today, uh, outside of the the uh, the card that Carl Dykstra uh, consigned, which we'll hopefully get to, is this item here, 1915 Boston Red Sox, real photo team postcard with the Babe Ruth rookie year, newly discovered example. Brian, I'm going to make this big and let's find Babe Ruth on there and you tell us about this item. Yeah, so Roots right there in the top center. This this piece is super cool. I mean, it came to us from a uh, a postcard collector. Didn't even know that he had this card. Had some other cards that caught his attention. We found this in a nondescript part of his collection. Um, 
with minor league baseball teams. I mean, just like incredible that this exists. Uh, graded authentic because somebody filled in a pinhole above the R there on the back. You can see it. But right. really, really special first year with the Red Sox as a major leaguer. Um, and you don't see a lot of these um, postcards. So just just a cool card, great condition, a couple creases in it, but um, really special and significant. Yeah, that's such a cool. I mean, 1915 Babe Ruth, you know, sure, he's pictured on the team, but that just adds that this is the coolest Babe Ruth early rookie ish year card that I've ever seen. I think it's I think it's awesome. And it almost looks like uh, the way it's got the rounded corners, it almost looks like it's a TV set, but there were no TVs around in 1915. Maybe the original design of the TV was was designed by someone who had a 1915 Boston Red Sox uh, <laughs> postcard. I know it's a, that's a long, a long, a long stretch there, everybody. I recognize that. Vintage Card Collector wants to know, is there a premium for when you have the quotes around the Babe Ruth autograph, Brian? I mean, I think the premium is just that, you know, it's earlier. He discontinued the use of the quotes. Um, and so you can date it to very early on. And and he suspended it around the time that he went to New York. So, you you know, you just know that this is early 1920, circa 1920. Um, so that would be the premium. Uh, some collectors will prefer a later example, but uh, I always defer to the the older, the better. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that, Brian. And as we had a request earlier from Carl Dykstra, says he concerned con consigned his 1934 Gaudi Lou Gehrig PSA 1. So, Brian, I'm guessing that this right here would be Carl's card. So let's have a look at this for Carl. I hope you're still with us, Carl. But here it is. And, oh, you know what I love about this, Brian? I love the uniformity of the rounded corners. To me, I'd be super happy to uh, to add a card like this to my collection. If 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 the top corners were round and the bottom ones were square, I wouldn't like it as much. I like I love the uniformity of the natural organic wear on this card. Don't you? And look at the color and the centering overall. What a great one. This is a great one. Yeah, so it's it's, it's uh, the, the old adage, buy the card, not the, the holder, right? I mean, not all ones are created equal. This one grades it the way it does because it's got some creasing you can see there. But by and large, it's a really good example. A lot of character, a lot of very outstanding attributes. Um, and we talked about it earlier, the, the centering, the color, the, the round corner uniformity. Beautiful card. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wonder, Carl, did you upgrade or why are you selling such a beauty? I think it's awesome. I just, I love, I love cards like that. But Carl, thanks for letting us know about that. And uh, Hassan Barazi wants to know, are you going to be releasing an app at Robert Edward Auctions anytime? Uh, and is that on the roadmap, Brian? Not in the immediate future, maybe, but uh, not, not in the cards right now. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you, Hassan, for the question. And Carl's here says, my friend's father-in-law found it in the garage and asked for your help. Well, congratulations. Uh, that's why you're selling it. Okay. Cause it's not, it's not, not your card, but very, very cool card. All right. Well, listen, we, here's the main page guys. We've gotten through the items we wanted to here the, you know, kind of, so, sort of the, the more featured items are always going to be the early lots in the auction. I'll just kind of scroll through for a bit of a review for everybody on many of the items that we did look at and now you're getting into some of the oldest items as we scroll down but i've i've found that it's really easy to navigate this website you can if you're going to do a search it's right now it, it's defaulting to title the probably the easiest way to search but you can also search by description you can look for whatever you're, you want to look for i find it's easier to have title in there and then you know you can just put in whatever you want let's put in wayne gretzky and just have a look and and you know you'll kind of you'll kind of get an idea but Brian, I thought it was kind of a good idea. Uh, what? Did I, oh, I spelled it wrong. There we go. That should fix it. So you can see it's going to bring you up all the items that, that you know Wayne Gretzky is associated with are important. And there you go. All the Gretzky items available. You can do that with anybody that you might be interested as well. And Jonathan Clark says, can you talk about lot 129? It's a PSA 9 over 100 years old. So let's go to lot number and let's go to 129. I'm curious what this is, Brian. I have to I have to see it. Here we go. Jonathan Clark, here's the lot. Brian, we are looking at a 19, sorry, an 1894 
N142 Duke Cabinet Wilbert Robertson SGC2. I don't know why Jonathan Clark wanted us to look at it. He said it's a PSA 9. Did I yeah, miss so it? Might, might, might be a different lot number that he's looking at. But, I mean, the Dukes, these, these are rare cards. You don't see them all that often. Uh, probably not what Jonathan wants us to be looking at. But, um, <laughs> look, I mean, there's a tremendous variety. And, and you know, there's, there's high-grade cards. Um, I think maybe search E98 in the title. E90 dash uh E90 uh E98. Say E98? Uh, yep. Ah, here we go. Uh is it uh huh? So I thought we maybe had a nine in there. Maybe uh is it lot 192 instead of 129? Oh, 192, he says now. So let me go back to lot <clears throat> 192. Here we go. There it is. The E93. The E93 standard caramel Frank Chance. Yeah. So E93 standard caramel, um, we did a set break of the number one set a couple years ago. Uh, staggering. I mean, just hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Cubs and Youngs and, and uh, key cards from that set. This Chance graded a 9 OC, as you see there. Top tier Hall of Famer, important to the Cubs fans, important to anybody that collects Hall of Famers. But these caramel cards are just so tough to find in uh, in high grade. So nice example. And it's not going to break the bank. You see, it's there, a thousand dollar starting bid. It's already got one bid, um, but a good a good card if you're looking for a sample that won't won't set you back a ton of money, and it's still 114 years old. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's definitely held up over. That over time, and the last one we're going to look at for Orlando, the N162 Kelly. Let's have a quick look at that. I think that's a PSA three, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it is. It's a PSA three. This is the one for Orlando, 1888 King Kelly. Wow, what a cool looking card this is. Anything you'd like to say about this one, Brian? Um, I'm not seeing it on my screen, but if I remember. Oh. If I remember it correctly, sorry. It's... Let me let me fix that. Let me fix that. What I mean, happened? so I'll just speak generally about the N one sixty two. It's got a great imagery. Yeah, there it is. So there for anybody is. that's not familiar, it's just got this wonderful illustration, beautiful colors. It's a good looking three. I mean, it's a super good looking three. Um, oh. So Orlando's got good taste. Yeah, I mean this. I'm just trying to see. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to to tell, but this looks really nice for a three. Yeah, so you got a little bit of paper loss on the back there. Oh, that's what's doing it right there. That's got to be what's bringing it down from probably like a five or a six. Looks like it, yeah. And that that to me is a value buy right there. That's where that's that's how you get that's how you get a a, a beautiful a, a car that presents super well for less than it would otherwise sell for because of something on the back like that. To me, great card, likely worthy of an eye appeal designation as well. So, all right. Well, listen, uh, Brian, great auction. So many, so many cool items. Uh, I'm excited to watch a few of them. The Satchel Page, the, the 54 Tops Hockey Pack, the Jordan Sneakers, the sets, the set registry sets. Is there one or two items that you're most excited to, to watch? Well, I mean, the stuff that's never been seen before is the stuff that always excites me or the stuff that hasn't come up for sale in a long time. So the Jordan shoes being totally new, that that's exciting. The Broadleaf Cobb that nobody knew existed. The Jeter that hasn't come up for sale in almost a year and a half. But even if you go deeper in the auction, I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about five and six figure items today. There's stuff in there that's going to sell for $100, $200, $300, $500. There's a lot of variety um, and I'm just excited to see what people get excited about, frankly. That's why we do it. Yeah. Well, Orlando says, great auction. I will bid on a few items. Orlando, all the best. Good luck to you on Orlando. I don't know if you know Orlando, Brian, but uh, he's got a YouTube channel called The Collector's Dream. And he's just a collector who loves to share his passion. And he's got a great collection. So hopefully, Orlando, you're able to add uh, one or more pieces from this from this uh, catalog auction to your collection. Brian. Um, well, thanks for joining. As always, I really enjoy doing these catalog auction previews with you and uh, spending time with you is always a, a pleasure. So 
Thank you so much. If there's anything else you'd like to mention to the audience before we sign off, now's your chance and then we'll wrap up. Now, if you hit the website, robertedwardauctions.com, browse, ask for a free catalog, register to bid. If you don't see something in this auction, we do them every month, not, not of this uh, size and scope, but lots of opportunity. And then the bids go until the 21st of April. There you go. And if you're going to be registering on the website, there will be a, a, a search bar that says, how did you hear about us? I believe Sports Cards Live, my YouTube channel will be an option. So let them know that you were watching and that you heard about it through here. Gary, thank you for being here. Says, great show. Love the old cards. Brian, thanks again. This was yeah. fun. Thank you. We're going to wrap up. To everybody watching, thank you for tuning in. If you're watching later on, I hope you're enjoying following the auction, winning a few of these items for your collection. Everybody, have a great rest of your Thursday. The weekend is almost here. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we will see you again later. This episode of REA Live on the Sports Cards Live channel is now